The 2015 iPhone 6S is, in a lot of aspects, surprisingly usable in 2023. And for under $100 USD on the used market, on paper, it doesn't seem like such a bad deal. And so, is there any truth to that? Or are there actually plenty of hidden catches ready to swindle away your hard-earned money? Let's find out, starting with the design. And by the way, timestamps are in the description if you'd like to see something specific. So in terms of design, it's not going to knock anyone's socks off. We've seen this classic home button and bezels look many, many times before. You can easily tell it's an iPhone. In fact, the 2022 iPhone SE that Apple is still selling brand new is pretty much the exact same thing. Although the 6S's age is given away by that metal back and antenna bands on the top and bottom, instead of glass like we're used to nowadays, which means that we unfortunately do miss out on wireless charging and it is more slippery in the hand without a case. But the upsides are that the metal is a hundred times more durable than glass, doesn't pick up fingerprints, and at least in my opinion, it just looks better. But coming back to the feel in the hand, the 6S is almost utopian. It's that absolute perfect form factor, super thin and light so that one-handed use is effortless, but not so light that you wouldn't notice if it fell out of your pocket. It's got the teensiest bit of heft, which makes it not too light. Now the 6S Plus, which is this phone's biggest sibling, is still pretty thin and light, but the shape is significantly more cumbersome and sort of more inconvenient, so you might have a little bit more trouble carrying it around and using it with one hand, but still it doesn't really compare to the behemoths that model and flagships are. Now on the front we get our bezels and home button. Definitely not a look from the past few years, apart from the iPhone SEs of course, but the 6S was actually the last iPhone to have a proper physical pressable home button instead of the haptic home button that would come the following year with the iPhone 7. On there, the home button is simply a pressure sensitive surface that vibrates when it detects a press, but on the 6S you're getting the real deal. Much more tactile, but on the other hand is technically less reliable due to more moving parts. In addition, there's also second generation Touch ID, another first, the previous iPhone 6 and 5S only had first generation, but this second generation means that you can just brush your thumb past gently, and the phone will recognise you pretty much instantly without you sort of having to hold it on there for a good second. Something that seems pretty minor in the big picture, but it's definitely a noticeable day-to-day -day difference. Now on the bottom we get our speaker, lightning port, and would you believe it, a headphone jack. Although the 6S was infamously the last iPhone along with the first generation SE to have this, it was never seen again after the launch of the iPhone 7, and of course those new $150 wireless. AirPods. How convenient. But if you do get your hands on a 6S, it is nostalgic to experience that 2015 sensation of listening to music on wired headphones while also charging your phone. Also, the speaker beside the headphone jack, as expected, is pretty bad all in all, but I guess it does the job for what it is. Now moving back to the front of the 6S, we have our 4.7 inch LCD display. Pretty much the same one as on the iPhone 6, 7 and 8 and 2nd and 3rd generation SE. I've talked about this display plenty of times, and it's still decent enough and does the job. In a nutshell, it's pretty much as basic as possible while still being good in the eyes of the average person. You can scroll social media, watch content, send messages, it'll all look pretty good. With a resolution of 1334 by 750 and pixel density of 326 pixels per inch, it's nowhere near as sharp as something more recent, but you still can't see any pixels from a normal viewing distance. It is worth noting though that even though you might not be able to see any pixels, the actual resolution only adds up to around 720p, not 1080. So you actually can't watch videos on here in full HD. Plus it's just LCD and not OLED, so pixels aren't individually turning off and on, which basically means you're not getting those deep true blacks, but more of a very dark purple from the backlight. But yeah, 2015, we can forgive that. The brightness also does only go up to around 430 nits though, so outdoor use in the sun can be quite difficult, especially here in Australia. And how can I not mention in 2023 its 60Hz refresh rate, which basically means the display is moving at 60 frames per second compared to flagships nowadays with buttery smooth 90 or 120Hz displays. So basically, on newer phones, the frame rate is higher, so everything from scrolling articles to swiping around the interface will look significantly more laggy coming from a high refresh rate display. It's pretty jarring going back to 60Hz if you're used to 90 or 120Hz. With all of this being said though, in person it does look much better than it sounds on paper. It's not exactly a black and white versus colour TV difference compared to what we're seeing nowadays, more so it's just missing a lot of the bells and whistles that have become quite commonplace in 2023. You can go about anything and it'll look fine, but once you start digging around at the specs, it is missing quite a bit compared to what we're used to nowadays. Now the 6S Plus's display is identical apart from the fact that it's 5.5 inches instead of 4.7, and it's a full 1080p HD with a higher pixel density, so you are getting a sharper image on there where pixels are much less visible, but it is still 60Hz and LCD. Oh, and by the way, the 6S was also the first iPhone to feature 3D touch on the display, allowing users to be able to press hard to access shortcuts into apps and quickly view photos and videos, although unfortunately that ended in 2018 with the iPhone XS. But the 6S 
Access was the first to do it three years prior. All in all, the Successor's display holds up decently, you know, it does the job. Don't expect anything more of it than simply being fine enough for most people who don't really care about tech specs. You know what's more than fine enough for most people though? Buying three months of affordable, high quality data and getting three months free with today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers top-end speed coverage and data for literally as low as $15 a month. And get this, three months free if you sign up before December 30th using my link below. And plus, Ryan Reynolds owns the company, something I bet you can't flex about your current mobile plan. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? Because Mint doesn't have any retail stores, this cuts out all the costs for salespeople and therefore all of your overpriced mobile bills. With Mint Mobile, you can't notice a single bit of difference compared to mainstream service providers, whether you're playing heavy online games or simply browsing the web or scrolling social media. It's truly high quality service that will carry you through anything and everything. And because Mint supports eSIM, you can make the switch without leaving your bed, all while keeping the same number. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, they'll ship you a physical card for free. And so if that sounds pretty darn good, head to my link in the video description to access this incredible offer. For that, you're getting unlimited high quality 5G data with the US's largest mobile network, and again, three whole months free if you sign up using my link below before December 30th. You'll save a boatload of cash with no drawbacks, no caveats, and definitely no price hikes. And thank you so much to Mint Mobile for partnering with me for this video. And now, let's take a look at the iPhone 6S's cameras. What kind of caveats could they be hiding? Well, like the display, the camera setup on here does the job, but don't expect it to do anything more than the job. On the rear, the 6S gets a 12 megapixel main sensor and a 5 megapixel selfie camera. This was actually the first iPhone main lens to get a 12 megapixel sensor, bumping up from 8 megapixels on the iPhone 6, and Apple would continue to use 12 megapixel main sensors all the way up until 2021. The quality on here isn't really the best anymore. We're missing quite a lot of little things that all sort of add up to make a better image, such as optical image stabilization, and being the last non-plus sized iPhone not to have stabilization, you will have to make quite a conscious effort to hold the phone still to get as little blur as possible. I will say though, for just capturing quick memories or taking a photo of a shopping list, it's fine. The shutter speed is quick, and in good lighting, it actually can be quite decent. It's just that newer phones have come such a long way, both in terms of camera features and being able to take good photos in difficult lighting conditions. And that's the main drawback. The smaller sensor on here lets in much less light, so it won't pick up as much detail as something newer, and it's especially quite rough in those indoor situations with inconsistent lighting. Plus, again, we're also missing quite a lot of modern niceties like portrait mode, night mode and multiple lenses. You just can't do as much with this camera as you could with something that came out even just a few years after this. Now the 6S Plus does add optical image stabilization, so on there it's a lot easier to get a steady shot, although the smaller iPhones did get this come 2016 with the iPhone 7. Now the selfie camera on here isn't so different. At 5 megapixels, it's not going to be creating any masterpieces with amazing colors, detail or dynamic range, but then on the other hand, for someone like a grandparent or kid who just wants a camera that works decently enough, well, it works. Again, considering the smaller sensor size and the lack of features like stabilization and portrait mode, etc. Now video can be shot on here in up to 4K at 30 frames per second. In fact, this was actually the first iPhone to be able to record in 4K. That was pretty darn impressive for 2015. And also kind of ironic since you technically can't view it in all its glory due to the 720p display. It's not bad video though. Yes, it's shaky because of no stabilization and generally it is just worse because of more primitive dynamic range and color. But like the photos, it does the job. And in decent lighting, it does have its moments. Now in terms of the performance on the iPhone 6s, this is where it actually gets quite impressive. On here we get the Apple A9 chipset and 2GB of RAM, which might sound absolutely gutless at first, but this was a diabolical leap in performance back in 2016 compared to the previous iPhone 6. And it still shows nowadays, the iPhone 6s on iOS 15 is just so much better than the iPhone 6 on iOS 12. Even though the iPhone 6 is only one generation behind the success and is running significantly older software. And thanks to Apple's terrific software optimization for its older devices, day-to-day, -day, everyday tasks on the success, like messaging, browsing the web, and looking at photos, is a surprisingly smooth experience. Like, it actually gets these things done pretty quick. Yes, it can sometimes take a second or two longer to open apps, but in terms of everyday, normal activities, the success doesn't even come close to being sluggish. When it comes to heavy 3D games and sending large files though, the success will start to conk out and heat up to the temperature of the sun, which is fair enough. It is an eight-year-old phone with two gigs of RAM. It's already beyond impressive what it can do 
do in this day and age with such few hiccups. While I wouldn't really call it a buttery smooth experience, for just light to moderate everyday use, the 6S actually pulls through quite well, but don't expect it to run Roblox because it won't. Now yes, while the performance on here is still somewhat decent, that doesn't mean there's no trade-off to that. To keep the performance as usable as it is today, Apple stopped giving the 6S updates in September of 2022, rendering it stuck on iOS 15 forever, which is now two versions behind. What this means is that you won't be getting any new software features, and slowly but surely, apps will begin to have compatibility issues to some degree as the years roll on, and iOS 15 gets less and less commonplace. Now with that being said, that doesn't mean the phone just magically decides to stop working. You should still get somewhat trouble for use for maybe one to two years from now, but that's only an estimate. It's really not recommended using an unsupported phone just because of the uncertainty of future compatibility with apps, and because there's just so many better options out there for around the same price, but we'll get to that in a bit. With all of this being said though, the 6S is actually the longest supported iPhone in history, getting seven whole years of updates, which is an insanely long time to keep a phone supported considering that most people upgrade sort of every two to three years. I say this in every video, but it's clear that Apple is no longer slowing down older devices so that you're forced to upgrade, but they're now trying to make them last as long as possible, and phones like the 6S are living proof of that, and to be honest, it probably was a necessary evil to cut off the 6S because another update might have slowed it down significantly and we wouldn't have the decent performance that we do. So is it an unusable ancient relic? No, but it's on its way there. In a couple of years, the amount of apps that work well with the 6S will have dropped drastically, so I would definitely consider upgrading soon if you're still using one of these. And finally, if you want one more reason not to get a 6S in 2023, look no further than the battery life, because it's rubbish. The 6S never had a massive battery to begin with at 17-15 milliamp hours, so pair that with 8 years for the battery to degrade, and you'll really start to find yourself struggling to get more than a couple of hours, or even one hour, of screen on time. Even if your battery health is good, and even if you only use your phone lightly throughout the day, the older, less efficient chipset is working overtime to maintain the more intensive software working from an already shoddy battery, and with moderate to heavy use, good luck getting more than like half an hour of use. Compared to a new, or at least newer phone, the 6S and 6S Plus's battery is, without a doubt, absolute rubbish. And so, with everything about the iPhone 6S now out of the way, it's pretty clear that this phone should be avoided like the plague in 2023. Yes, it's got a decent display, the cameras can take okay photos, and performance is done decent, but the lack of future updates will have greatly hindered compatibility with apps in like two years, and the battery life is nothing short of pretty much unusable. Even though the phone can easily be had for less than $100 on the used and refurbished market, there are just so, so many better options out there for not that much more that will give you a next level experience in comparison, like the iPhone SE second gen or the iPhone XR, both of which I've done videos about in 2023 if you're interested. I mean, for someone like a kid or grandparent, the success can work for the basics, and there are plenty of people still out there using this phone, but there's really no reason to go out and buy one when the value proposition is just so poor compared to other handsets at this price. And if you're still using a success, you absolutely should consider upgrading soon. Trust me, it's a worthwhile investment. But the success back in its day was quite the advancement, bringing things like 3D Touch for the first time, and being the last iPhone to have things like the physical home button and the headphone jack and to receive those seven whole years of updates. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to Techspree for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Techspree, and I'll see you as always next time.